All right, hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study through the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We're currently in Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to do part 2 of our study about the fallen angels uh, have sex with women and uh, produce children and meet a... Um, um, a quick <laughs> uh, uh, judgment. Now, um, I last time I, I I just the last study I just wanted to share because of verses like this. Um, because of verses like this, um, we're gonna we're gonna come across verses that, yeah, it's stated in scripture. But we need to understand how to uh, accept it, right? In other words, is it the main and the plain? Or is something that, okay, yeah, it's here. It's in Scripture. We're acknowledging that it's in Scripture. One of the things I didn't talk about before was, um, um, and the, 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 when we talk about, processing or, or the, the translations um, I, and again I don't want to get too deep into that but sometimes you can have translation issues um, it, with wording and things like that like I guess I don't want to get too deep into that but my point is um, we, we still acknowledge that it's there it's in the scripture I a good example it's a good example let me you know because I um, the the last several verses in Mark chapter 16 um, is debated as if it's a part of the original letter. And there's a good debate for that, for good reason. That some of the, the writing in it doesn't match up with the gospel. Like when Jesus says, you take up serpents and slay, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. That, that, that statement alone is not consistent with anything in the gospel. Now we acknowledge it's there. It, it, God allowed it to uh, sip, find its way into Mark's gospel. But here is the thing: we we would take that. That's a good example. We would take that and just simply, okay, it's here. Let's move on. Let's not build a, a doctrine off of it. There is there are some churches that do right. They have. These churches, you know, in Indiana and Kentucky, you know, they have these snake services where they drink poison and have poison to snake. These are ignorant people. Just, I'm just sorry, they're just stupid, ignorant people. That's why some of them die and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, but I, you, if you could reason with them, you would say, okay, we'll say again. You, you read something. Even with that, though, God never told you to, to have a service like that. Uh, anyway. I, that's one of the reasons why I just wanted to mention that and go on. I didn't want to get too deep into that. Um, so let's go back to our verse at hand, and that is this idea of the fallen angels, um, you know, coming to the earth uh, and marry women. And let me go back and read it, and then I'm gonna I'll break down the verse. Like I say, I, I'm indulging this only because it's kind of a, it is a kind of an interesting. It is kind of an interesting verse, passage here, you know, that uh, me as a person that love, kind of like back and forth. I, it, it is interesting, but let's 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 kind of break it down here. Uh, verse one. Now, f first and foremost, understand that we're 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 coming off this kind of a shift. So we, we remember we start with the creation, Genesis one two. We start with the creation of the heavens and the earth, man man being put in the garden chapters 3 uh, um, we see the shift of the fall of man in chapters 4 and then we see uh, this kind of progression of sin and then chapters 5 we see the genealogies we see this long progression here these 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 generations were a lot longer in time in some cases almost up to a thousand years right um, so now in chapter 6 we're we're in this period of time that man is growing on the earth 
And and so we kind of see the shift, and that's what he says. When mankind began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful, and they took any they chose as wives for themselves. Now, so these two verses here, the first kind of setup was going on. The mankind uh, be began to multiply, and then it says the term sons of God. <clears throat> and right off this term, sons of God, when it is used in other verses of scripture, refer to angels. Okay? So that, for example, in the book of Job, we see that the sons of God presented themselves before God. You will note that the sons of God do not refer to the fallen angels. Okay, so the problem is, what does Moses mean here by sons of God? Is he referring to angels? As again, there are some people believe that these angels crossed the line by coming down and mating with uh, women. So one of the strongest arguments that I would say for that is the use of the term sons of God. And, and it is used twice. Okay, uh, back, I mean, down in verse, what is it, four, is that? The Nephilim were on, uh, were on the earth both in those days afterwards when the sons of God came to the daughter of the man, mankind. So this term, sons of God, this would be one of the strongest arguments for that. Now, my personal belief, I do not believe that this verse of scripture here is referring to angels coming down and mating with women because in order for that to happen basically what you're saying is that angels who are spirits the bible is very clear from that they are not human they also do not have human dna they also do not have um sexual organs right so you would have to say that the angels would have to be able to take human form and, have, and that form would be so powerful that they are so creative that they would not, not take a human body, give it genitals, male sexual organs, sperm, right, and compatible DNA. That's that. That's a lot. Okay. But again, this is one of the primary beliefs of that. Okay. And again. The reason that it is a again the one of the strongest position is that uh, the use of the term the sons of God, which in other passages of Scripture in the Old Testament does refer to angels, but again the term is never fallen angels. So then you got to say that oh, were these sons of God not fallen, not with Lucifer, and then they decided to step out. Of line. Now the problem is we're already going too far with this. Why? Because this set of verses, just these four verses, they do not explain anything. Right? Don't don't really get into detail. Now, I will say I believe that the sons of God is a euphemism term. But again, I I, I I'm, let me just say this. My opinion here is only an opinion we have to kind of go back to say the scriptures themselves does not define this so that's the disadvantage here i'm only indulging this by the way because it's just fun to indulge here and i won't you know i won't do it often but I, again we're going to see other verses of scripture where we're going to scratch our head and say what what is going on with this all right so with that <laughs> The term sons of God does refer to um, fall, uh, angels, right? So whether they're fallen angels or not fallen angels, and certainly if it is referring to angels, these would be angels who fall, who, fall, who fell. So it says verse 2 again. Now keep in mind, when mankind began to multiply on the earth. So what we see coming from, ch from chapters 5, we can say chapters 4 and 5 and chapter 6, we're seeing a multiplying of men 
but this is in a bad way we'll get to that later okay so this is not in other words man multiplying on the earth the idea here is we see these um um unions and i'm going to say they're not godly unions but again we'll get to that later the sons of god saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful and they took wives and they chose okay so in other words these men as they begin to spread now by the way i'm going to say that i believe that these terms sons of god are referring to just powerful men powerful men and i'll prove that in a moment it says that they they were they were, they thought that they were beautiful and they took wives whom they chose right so then verse three okay so in other words the sons of god chose beautiful wives all right so then verse three says and the lord said my spirit will not remain with mankind forever because they are corrupt their days would be 120 years so right here we see god it moses kind of interjecting into this story that there is wickedness here now we're going to get to this in the next study as we begin to unfold the reasons leading up to the the, the flood of nor okay but so right away we see god saying ah man is wicked <laughs> okay but we'll get to that later man is wicked though that is the whole point man is wicked and he says that man was going to have 120 years so this is kind of a countdown clock 120 years i would say this that there have been some prosperity teachers word of faith teachers that have used this as a sort of timeline to believe god for your a lifespan um in fact they use two scriptures one in the book of psalm where it talks about uh man man's life should be 70 years and then some people and people have used this to be 120. in fact one of the most recent word of faith one of the architect of the word of faith uh earlier this year died and what was interesting when you went to his when you if you put it you know look at his funeral um they even had to say well you know fred didn't his name was fred price by the way uh, he didn't live to be 120 because he was like 89 when he died so he, he was like 30 years short and not only for that but then he died sick okay uh but they believe in that but again it's just the in both cases the both scriptures that they use it's just just bad theology there's no way other way to say that neither one of the scriptures was talking about you know your faith promise of what your lifestyle should be but your lifestyle should be a minimum of 70 years and then and it should be you know you can live up to 120 years and you're going to be healthy and all that other kind of stuff it just doesn't say that and it, and, and again you know I, I know i was under that movement for many many years and i can tell you i believe that but again look at what he's saying right here the, the idea is not talking about man's lifetime right here but their days talking about the corruption of that time okay the corruption of that time verse 4 the nephilim were on the earth both in those days and afterwards um when the sons of god came to the daughters of men who bore children to them now look at this last statement here they were powerful look men of old the famous men so this is why i believe that the sons of god here are referring to these powerful men not angels okay the term nephilim nephilim okay a lot of people want to make, make a uh kind of thing a big issue out of nephilim but the term nephilim simply means um giant um or fallen ones um uh, okay depending on how the english is translated you can also say powerful men okay powerful men all right but again remember the scripture does not spend a lot of time on this so neither are we but i think this kind of explains here i think this sort of explains um the idea of what what's kind of going on here powerful men emerged 
not just giants too, by the way, because remember, after the flood, we will see giants, giants, tall men, in that respect of just, you know, just a result of genetics, okay, good, bad, how you want to put it, they just kind of, a, they are uh, um, just a, um, 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 you know, like David will, of course, the, 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 the Philistine had giants that he was going to face. That giant was, I believe, about nine feet tall. Well, you know, and there's another case where you're going to see a guy who had six toes and six fingers and all that kind of stuff. But it's genetic. But this is way after the flood. So again, I don't believe here that he is referring to um, that the Nephilim were these giants and that you can also plug in the what's called the pre-adamant world and all that kind of stuff there. The last sentence right here to me, the last sentence to me sums it up. They were powerful men of old and famous men. And the, I think the, the biggest takeaway here is that they were very corrupt. We're going to see that in the next, in the, in the next study, but in the very next verse, you're going to see that, 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 that the, what is the biggest takeaway is that the, the corruption on the earth that these powerful men began to multiply on the earth in a most uh, sinful, corrupt way. And I think that's what, what you're going to see right here. Notice, you have God making this statement. He says, my spirit will not re remain with mankind forever. Now, some people see this as God's judging the... Um, I, I think some people see, that, see, see this as... Um, God judging the angels that fell. But then notice he doesn't mention the angels in the judgment. He mentions man. Right? He mentions man. Notice if 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 the because think about it. Accordingly, the angels instigated this corrupt union, and yet God doesn't mention them at all. Right? The sons of God, if they were the angels or fallen ones, wouldn't God at this point mention them too? But yet he says, he mentioned mankind. So, so again, remember, the, the whole point of scripture is the plan and purpose of God here on the earth. And while this is, again, very, very, you know, I would agree that it is you know, it's a very interesting verse of scripture here. Uh, but again, I certainly do not believe that he is referring to angels and all that kind of stuff. But that there were this corrupt men and these became powerful men, giants in the land or powerful leaders. Okay. Here's my thing. If you don't, and then if you disagree with that, that's fine. Again, my point is there's just not enough scripture to go around. Now, what's going to come in the very next verse is how wicked man is. And this is all leaning up to the why God is going to judge the entire earth and wipe out all of man. Notice he's not talking about angels here, but all of man. All right, guys, this we'll pick it up in our next study. So I will see you then. All right, guys.